Once you start jumping higher, it's very important that you can come down softly. And that's why we're going to look at the down loop. They can be a bit daunting in the beginning because sometimes the kite will pull you. But with these two easy steps, you should get there really quick. Both of these exercises will help you to control and get comfortable with the power of the kite when it loops. Before we get into these exercises, it's important to understand what makes for a smooth heli loop and how to prevent yourself from being slammed into the water with high speed. The key can be found when we look at the angle of the kite during the loop. We want the kite to loop above our head around 12, so it provides lift in an upward direction. This will provide you with a soft landing. When we loop the kite too early, this can change the angle of the pull. In this case, the kite pulls me mostly forward and that results in a high speed landing with a lot of vertical descent. At first sight, the kite angles don't seem that different, but when you compare them side to side, you'll notice that a couple of degrees already makes a big difference for the landing. This brings us to the first and probably the most important part from the head loop. You want to do a jump where it feels like the kite is flying behind you on the landing. Like that, the kite will fly around 12 when you do your loop and the resulting lift is up. The kite will only fly behind you when you do a high jump. As a rule of thumb, this should be at least 6 meters high, but it really depends on the kite size, the wind strength and your takeoff. If you've never experienced this feeling yet, you should probably work on your jumping technique first. So have a look at the video above here, which is about the perfect jump and how to get there. In the past minute, I've mentioned heli loops and down loops, but what's the difference? It's not uncommon to mix these two up, as I've already done in past videos and might even do in this video as well. So let's clear it up. This is how I currently define both loops. A down loop is a loop pulled with the front hand in order to steer a guide kite down for the wind window. This can be done when you're either on your way down from a jump or when you're riding on the water. The heli loop can be pulled with either the front hand or the back hand as long as you're on your way down. You should be in the sky for the majority of the loop and you can lick multiple heli loops together on the bigger jumps. I know this creates a little bit of a gray area where it's unclear if you should call it a down loop or a heli loop. And I guess that's just the way it is. If you have any suggestions on how to clear it out better, please drop them down in the comment box because these are also just my views. And keeping all that in mind, let's start with the first exercise, which is going to be a down loop jibe. Start off on a crosswind course with your kite at 45 degrees and slowly steer it up towards 1230. Stop edging your board and pull the bar all the way down before you initiate a loop with the front hand. This is the moment where you follow the kite with the board and carve downwind on your toe side edge. Make sure to steer hard for a small loop. It helps when you let go with your original back hand to open up the shoulders and make the toe side carve easier. The main goal from this exercise is to control the power of the kite with steering and direction control. It's important to start the loop from high in the wind window so the kite doesn't go straight through the power zone. You want to steer hard with the bar down so the kite makes a small loop. If you would push the bar out, it steers less quick and the loop will go through the power zone. When the kite builds up power, you want to ride straight downwind to soften the pull. It's very important that you follow the power of the kite. Next up, we have a look at the jump with a downloop transition. Aim to do a jump where you focus on a good carve so you have a vertical takeoff. You can reduce your riding speed if you're scared, but make sure you don't cheat on the carve towards the wind. As you reach the apex of a jump, you prepare for the landing as you would usually do. The timing for redirecting the kite stays the same. The biggest difference is that you keep steering the kite past 12 so it goes into a down loop. Make sure that you follow the power of the kite downwind and carve towards a crosswind course on your toe side edge. Untwist the bar when you've established your new course and have control over the kite. It doesn't really matter if you jump high or low. The most important part is that your timing for redirecting the kite 
stays the same as for a normal jump. It's only upon the landing where they differ, as that is the moment you initiate the loop to continue riding. Be sure to keep your bar down during the loop and steer hard for a tight turning radius. And remember to prepare for the pull. You want to tension up your stomach muscles and point the board slightly downwind. And last, only untwist your bar when you have full control over the kite. In other words, do not untwist your bar during the loop. After you've landed a couple of these smaller jumps with a down loop, it's time to build up the jump height and initiate that loop a little bit earlier so it becomes more of a heli loop. Do this at your own pace and only take small steps outside of your comfort zone. This can take multiple sessions, no worries at all. Keep in mind that the timing of the kite steering only differs a little bit from that of a normal jump. So there is no reason at all to start initiating your heli loop once you're miles off your landing and super high in the sky, because that will just create a very hard landing. And then I want to take a moment to thank Core Kiteboarding for supporting this channel and making it possible to create all this content. I've been riding with their gear since 2011 and I couldn't be happier with the quality of their products. And on that note, we get to the end of this video. Check out the perfect jump video if you haven't done so already. And I would say, see you on the next one.